So, uh, I'm realizing I'm spending a lot of time getting sort of the initial parts of the application up and going. Uh, hopefully, I'll just jump right into projects in the uh, you know upcoming weeks, but I want to make sure that we have a little bit of the basis of an application to work from um, for today. So, what is it that at a core, you know, at, at the core of the application we want to be able to do is have some shapes uh, that we're interacting with and to be able to move around in the space uh, with, those sh with those shapes. Of course, as the game progresses, we're going to want to be able to do a lot more levels of interaction with the shapes. Um, but the main idea is that we need to be able to move uh, some sort of character around and um, you know, then we want to essentially, you know, have it collide with some of these other things. So, for the purposes of today, I'm going to keep it really simple, um, and uh, you know, I'm still getting up to speed on some of these things, re remembering some of these things myself uh, in these libraries. So, uh, my live coding skills are not at their prime. That said, I think we can get um, some of these kind of initial things that we need in the application going. Oops, wrong thing. Okay, so jumping back into the application, uh, we essentially have right now screwy gravity and just a bunch of little little uh, floaty objects that don't really do anything. Don't have anything to do with uh, with a character or whatnot. So I'm gonna the first thing I'm gonna do is set the gravity back to normal. And uh, still got the frame rate set at 60. I am also going to, I'm con I commented this back in. I am setting up the user rec. I'm uh, giving it a, an initial uh, set of information as a, as a shape. And um, I'm giving it some physics properties too. I'm actually going to try to emulate the properties that we had here for the circle as well. So I'm just going to copy those outright. These are very arbitrary things, but uh, if you look at the documentation for Box2D, all of these things actually sort of equate to um, typical typical elements that you would have in a um, in a, a physics uh, you know actual physical terms that you would use for force and uh, you know for weight and for density and all that kind of stuff. So I'm also going to comment this stuff back in. So I'll run you through what this is doing. I was having trouble getting this working, so I'm going to try this again, and then if it doesn't work, we're going to call it a wash for today, and uh, we'll try it. You know, we'll try it again on another day. This dynamic floor, essentially, if you if we look back in the sort of definition area. It's a, a box 2D polygon, which means it's just a thing that's comprised of multiple points. It's essentially comprised of a polyline. So the difference between the polyline that we're making that's connecting all the circles together, or all the ellipses together, is that the ellipses interact with each other, but the polyline that's connecting them all does not. It's sort of like it has no actual properties that, are, that things are bouncing off of it or whatnot. Um, we're essentially just drawing that on the screen that's giving some sort of visual representation that those things are connected, but in terms of physics, those lines aren't actually doing anything. Later, we could actually make joints and visualize them and things would connect to them as, uh, as if they were jointed, um, but not, not for this. Uh, but what we do want to do is for this dynamic floor, we want to be able to make sort of like a little earthen, uh, you know, space that uh, something can walk on. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm making a new polyline. I'm, I'm going to close it off. Uh, I'm not sure if I have to close it off when I pass this into the, the box 2D uh, poly, poly, uh, polygon shape. But um, I'm essentially dividing this up into 202 points. Uh, and I'll get into that in a second. Uh, I'm also getting a divided width of the screen by that number. So let me actually bump that down to 50. So what this is doing is it's taking the width of the screen, which could be variable, it's, gonna, it's kind of fixed in this case, but 
Still, I don't actually have to factor this out. I can have it be dynamic variable. So the width of the screen, let's say it's 1024, and I'm dividing it by the number of subdivisions that we're going to have. So we've got 50 subdivisions here. So that's, you know, roughly, what, 20, 20 pixels space between each point. So the divided width, just, it's 20. And then I'm setting two, I'm passing in two initial points into uh, this, this shape. I'm passing in the uh, lower right-hand corner by making a point that's in the lower right-hand corner of the screen by going as far over to the right and as far down as we can go. And then I'm setting a second point into this, uh, which is essentially the uh, lower left. So I'm going to attempt the, the pop out here. Try to draw this here. So the two points that I was referring to, if this is the window, the first point is this guy, the second point is this guy, right? So this polyline is just a line right now. But then what I'm going to do is we're going to iterate through however many of those divided points we have. I'm going to pick a random point in and through there, right? And since this creates a polyline at the end, essentially what this is doing is making a line for the bottom that connects to the outside so that this, this shape might have its own mass if we wanted it to, but we don't want it to fall through the floor. And then it's connecting all these points, so we're making a very primitive world. Right? You guys see that? Yeah. So it looks like a graph, but essentially this is going to be a solid object that shapes can interact with, at least theoretically. So jumping back to the desktop here, zooming back in. So I got those first two points in, and then I'm going to be iterating through as many floor points as we have. Uh, and essentially, I'm going to be, for the x location, I need to take that divided width and multiply it by i. So the first time through 0 times divided width is going to be 0. So that's going to be in the very left-hand corner. And then as we move through, it's essentially going to go all the way up to 49, uh, at which, you know, that basically shifts the, the reference in the x, the left-right axis of these, these points that we're adding. So that's, that's why the first point I added was on the very right. That way we're kind of doing like a, a, clock, a clockwise motion in, in creating this ground space, right? So, as we do that, we're going to put in, we're going to add a vertex that's an OF point. We're adding in the X point location as the X. And then for the Y, we're taking, we're getting the height of the screen. So we're going to the very bottom. And then we're going to be backing off from that by some random amount. So I'm actually going to tweak this a bit because we don't want this to be too crazy. So there's a little bit of math. OF height minus, let's say, 200. So we're going to be 200 pixels back into the, towards the middle of the screen from the bottom of the screen by subtracting from the height. And then we're going to subtract a little bit more uh, based on this random number. So we're going to go from 0 to, let's say, 30. So it doesn't vary too much. right? There's a lot of ways that we could tweak that to make that a little better or worse. But we're adding those vertexes in as we go from left to right. And then I'm adding this to the dynamic points polyline that I made here. Dynamic floor has an add vertexes method that allows you to pass in a polyline. So we're just passing in that polyline at the end there. OK, so we did that. Um, then in the, uh, in the draw method, we're essentially going to draw that shape out, um, and it should show up on the screen. I did this a little bit earlier, and it actually did not draw, so I'm not entirely sure why that is.
for that while that's compiling. I'm just going to jump around in here a little bit. So yeah, it doesn't look like it drew that on screen, nor are things actually interacting with it. So I did something wrong with this polygon. Maybe it's that I didn't set it up correctly, or maybe I need to create it instead of setting it up. So let me try a couple different things here. I've actually never used this before. I'm going to try create instead. It takes the same parameters as set up. And let's see what happens when we do that. I'm not entirely sure if we need to update it as well. We might need to. to update it every time the update method is called. Also does not make it happy, so let me try doing setup and create. Let's see if that works. This might just not be in the cards for us today. And if that's the case, we'll try it a little differently. Okay, so still no luck with that. So instead of doing that, how about we try and make another vector. We're going to make a vector of rects. And this is going to work almost exactly the same. call them ground boxes. And they're essentially just going to have ground boxes that start, they are very dense, they start being drawn uh, on the ground. So what we have to do there is I'm going to essentially reuse this dynamic points stuff. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the floor for now. But I'm going to keep the points. Well, actually, no, I'm going to get rid of the points. Too. I'm going to get rid of the floor points, though, and the divided width. I'm going to keep that, I'm sorry. Get rid of the dynamic points. So, based on the floor points, we still want to have, let's say, 50 of these boxes. I'm going to still use the X point location, and the divided width is going to be the width of the box. might decrease that just a tiny bit so that they're not mass colliding with each other. And then instead of adding a vertex, I'm just going to add these boxes to the, sorry, I have to do. So what do I call these? I call these ground boxes. Add these ground boxes before, I'm going to add them to the vector. Before I do that, though, I have to create them. So OFX. Box 2D rect, and it's going to be called this box. This box, just to make sure I'm doing this the same as I do with ellipses, I'm going to set the physics and set up those. So I'm going to do pretty much the exact same thing. It might be a little bit different because it's a box. I'm going to give it the physics are going to be, I'm going to give it a lot more density and almost zero bounce so that these things don't really uh, move around that much. I could probably do that even more if I wanted. So I'm going to set up setup method of a rect takes a rectangle and the world. So it's a little different than what we had before. So. I think it also takes the four points of a rectangle too, so I'm going to do that. So we're not doing the touch X and Y. Sorry for this hum, there's a microwave in the background. Uh, 
So we're passing the world. For the x and the y, we're going to use the x point location as the starting point. For the y position, we're going to actually have to render, we're going to have to make a um, float that does the, uh, the randomization that we want. So uh, random height is going to equal, we'll do the same equation that we had from before, but I'm going to essentially use that as the height, right? So the height minus 200 minus a random number between 0 and 30. That's going to be how far down the box starts. And then uh, if we do the height minus that height, you're going to get the actual height of the box, if that makes sense. So what that gives you is how far down on the screen the box starts. But to actually get the height of the box, we have to subtract the height of the full window from that. So we have our x point location. Our y location is going to be OF. We're doing this a little bit in reverse because of how these things are asking, what these things are asking for. The width is actually going to be the x point location. Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be the divided width because that is consistent across. And the uh, actual height of the object is going to be the random height. So hopefully I did that right. And now I can push that into the ground boxes. Okay, so in here, we don't have to do this updating anymore. We also don't need to, uh, we need to draw these out. So I'm gonna do this essentially the exact same way that I did the ellipses. And I'm even gonna set the same colors for the most part. I'm gonna do an OF rect, takes four values. Instead of circles, we're gonna do ground boxes. Take ground boxes I, that grabs that particular ground box, and we're going to take the width, I'm going to take ground boxes I, I'm going to copy that so I can paste it, I'm going to do the height, ground boxes I dot, uh, I did that actually in reverse order, we want the width and the height last, and we want Ground boxes dot x, ground boxes dot y first. So hopefully it is happy with me about that. It is not. So let's go find out what rects have in terms of oh they have a get width method. So that's what we want. Get width. Now there's going to be a, some, typically we would actually want to rotate these shapes because, you know, unlike circles, pure circles, even when they're rotating, they look like they're in the exact same place. Um, these guys, since they're fixed, however, we don't have to worry about that as much. they're bouncing off of each other. So let's quit that. I'm going to change the amount of boxes to 10. I'm also going to change the width. I'm just going to subtract just a tiny bit of width from those. I'm going to subtract like 0, 0, 0.5, 0, 0.5, something like that. 
So if they're directly on top of each other, they might be causing problems. Oh. I'm doing something wrong here. This is why live programming is a bad idea. style and pop style. The way style, any of these set color things are going to change essentially what happens in the future for anything. So if we wrap something in a push style, pop style, we ensure that we're not, uh, we're not screwing up other things. Strangely enough though, The widths and heights of these shapes are just causing all sorts of problems. You see that things are at a weird sideways slant. So something I'm doing is it's really not happy about. Uh, it might have something to do with our outside, outside border. But as you can see, there's lots of little quirks with getting going with this. I am actually at a loss and I am feeling like I'm going to be wasting people's time if I go too far into trying to, to tackle this. So what I would like to do instead is show you just a couple of other things that are out there. Um, one of the other libraries that's out there for this type of work is called Bullet. And I had it open before here. Let me see if I have it open still. Bullet is another, like Chipmunk and Box2D, the only reason I'm not using this is because it is a 3D uh, uh, library, much like Box2D is a 2D library. So you can see here, throwing all of these shapes into a room, and much like we did in the previous example, when these shapes are in colliding with each other in some way, the, the uh, cubes turn gold and the ellipses turn red. So you can see a very similar type of library, but it works in 3D space. And this is, you know, has a lot of potential uh, usefulness in a lot of different applications, especially if you're doing a 3D game. So I wanted to make sure that you guys could see this too. You can also make boxes and you can, you can make both of them at the same time. This is actually running not as an iPhone app, but as a native app. So you can see sort of some of the other types of things you can do. There's also some ray casting going on here, which allows you to select 3D shapes and move them around. So I wanted to show you this as well, because uh, there's a lot of things out there. And this is just a couple of, this is just a couple of examples of Bullet uh, and Box2D. To sort of see, you know, show you how much you can get out of uh, out of open frameworks uh, and their their set of libraries out there. So I'm gonna build this one real quick. This shows you some joints. This is gonna look very similar in some ways to uh, doing joints in Box 2D. It's just in a 3D space. You can see the light source is actually what I'm moving around with the mouse. So when I get further up in the air, I can kind of see that the, the ellipse that's behind it is always lit by it, as well as being sort of attached to it. So the ramifications, of course, of using something like this along with other shapes that interact with it, there's all sorts of fun gaming potential. Um, so those are uh, an example, a couple different examples of uh, what we have going uh, in terms of libraries and uh, open frameworks. And uh, there's, a, of course, a ton of stuff. I'm not going to show you the code of this. It's a, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit more detailed, but not too much. There's a few different bullet libraries out there. You'll see same 
yeah. types of things are being done. There's vectors for shapes, there's vectors for joints. Oh, I didn't even show you the fun part of that particular example. Let me run that again. If you start clicking, then you get this dynamic set of joints that follow everything around. And it looks like there's actually shaders or there's little rects for the lines, so the, the lines connecting the points are actually getting lit up too in a weird way. So all sorts of fun little things you can do. And once I hit spacebar, all except for the original shape detach from all those joints disconnect and whatever physics they had at the time sort of propels them out into space. So there's all sorts of fun things uh, you can do with these libraries. And a lot of like really popular games out there use a lot of these very simple properties, things like Angry Birds, things like uh, you know, first-person shooters, things like Minecraft, they use a lot of these, uh, you know, these libraries that take abstracted uh, physic physical world um, things and apply them more directly uh, in a way that's easier for a developer to get up and running. So I think this is probably a good place to stop for now. As you can see, I've got, uh, I'm just, just now scratching the surface of uh, playing around with some of these libraries again, um, getting back up to date with them. Um, hopefully I'll have uh, you know some more things up and running in the, in the coming weeks and I'll be able to use those as a basis for the things that we're talking about, um, as well as sort of applying them back into the physical space, um, you know, actually using a device to do some of the interaction here so we can make sure that that's good um, and moving forward from there. So. Uh, that's all I've got for today. Thank you for stopping by, and I will see you next week. Thanks. Okay.